we purchased this property in 1973. It's a 400 acre piece of property uh, and the golf course uh, was a project that we started in 1987 on approximately 125 acres. And that project was, this, the responsibility of that project was assigned to me. So that's how I became involved. What did you first think of the property? What were your first impressions when you decided to build the golf course on it? Well, we knew the property fairly well. We had owned it for quite some time before we actually started on the golf course. And we had worked on various parts of it. Uh, we built a thoroughbred uh, horse racing breeding farm on the north end of the property. Uh, we made some improvements to the market. This area, this portion of the property was already in use as a golf course and a driving range. Lori Carroll and Doug Grove were the people that ran the facility. So there was a golf history here and we just expanded on it. And where we encroached on adjacent lands, it was basically farmlands or lands that weren't really being used for any purpose. So. My first impressions of the property, I don't know if I had visualized the golf course in any kind of detail. You know, it's, it's something that an architect might be able to do, but for me it was a piece of property, a very beautiful piece of property, that had a potential to be much more than it was. And uh, thanks to Bill Robinson, who designed the, the course, and Willie Hall, who built it, um, they put it together and made it what it is. Uh, I was as pleasantly surprised as everybody else when they were finished. So I can't say that, I can't claim that I visualized it at the outset and just told them what to do. In fact, that was one of our advantages. I didn't know enough about golf or golf course design to interfere with what they were doing, <laughs> or I'm sure I'd have messed it up. Um, we've, we've definitely tried to uh, establish a strong embedded culture to the organization certain things that we really believe in and we just we just are committed to customer service for example we're committed to a very high standard of, of facilities uh, in every form and, and maintenance all those things are, are just absolutely fundamental to our operation and we repeat them ad nauseum and that culture now, I think, is so firmly embedded in the organization that we don't need to talk about a lot of things because everybody knows what our culture would direct us to do in any particular situation. And this is what gives me a lot of confidence in the future. The BC chapter asked us to put forward uh, a submission indicating why we thought we should be selected amongst the nominees. And Jim actually came up with a really great idea of inviting those people who play here to respond to that question. You know, we didn't really want to get into self-promotion and it wasn't that credible coming from us, but we thought a response from our customers would be um, an interesting way of responding to this request and the response, I mean, it was, it was really, really impressive. And it was very satisfying uh, for those of us who have tried really hard to make this an exceptional facility to hear what people had to say about it. The award, we, we succeeded. We were named the facility of the year in 2010. Didn't mean near as much as some of those comments, it was really something. We've got a couple of rumors that persist constantly. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest one, and I think it's even in the in the menus that we've had from time to time, is about Bill Maddock. Yeah. Did he really lose it? Lose it in a game of cards? <laughs> did, did did you have the four aces that, that you fought? No, on no. Him? Actually, we didn't. We didn't win it in a card game. If he lost it, it was with somebody uh, to somebody else. He was a very interesting character, so I wouldn't completely dismiss the, that rumor, but, but I'm not sure that I believe it. Uh, 
we purchased the property from Dillingham Corporation. And uh, I know Bill played cards, but he didn't play with the people from Dillingham <laughs> Corporation. And they were the ones that assembled Bill's property and other properties adjacent to it that we ultimately purchased. He was a character, though, a real character. Did you know him well? I did. Um, even after we bought the property and he didn't own it anymore, he still managed it. He used to evict tenants when he felt like evicting them or didn't like them. And when I'd ask him, well, why'd you do that? I mean, couldn't you let me know? He said, I'm doing you a favor. I'm managing your property for you. So, I mean, we had the, that kind of a relationship. Uh, he was quite the character. Another one I've heard from several golfers is that after the course was built, you offered it to Saanich for a dollar. No, there, I, could, I could categorically state that that is untrue and I'm amazed that that rumor has persisted for as long as it has. I mean, we've had some bad days, but they've never been that bad. <laughs> the other one that sort of goes along with that is that the name, the golf course name changes, but inevitably the Jell family is linked to the purchase of another golf course. Well, uh, we, we have in the past looked at some other golf courses. Um, we have property here um, to the north of the current golf course, uh, which we laid out a proposed golf course on that property, and and it would fit very, very nicely. Uh, it, it would just be a spectacular course. And um, in terms of proceeding with it, I'm not sure that we're even close to to that. Um, and as for buying another facility. Uh, I think we're quite happy with what we've got. Every year we try to identify how we can make the course better. And every year we do something. And um, we don't do it just for the sake of doing it. We do it because we're committed to making the course better and better and better every year. And that will go on forever.